All right, well, doing it again. Here we go. Pushing the button, Mrs. Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Just get it going, everybody. Full-blown tortoise in the hair situation we've got going here. Uh, hello, everybody. Hi, guys. <laughs> Welcome back, Mrs. Ryan. Hi. <laughs> Pros in the house. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, uh, I love it. we're just starting <laughs> for everyone who's here now, but we have done all of this before. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody forgot to push a, a button to record stuff today, but right now we are recording, Mrs. Ryan. We have Al Desharm in the house. Um, very excited about that. He's here to do it all over again. We didn't record the whole podcast. Luckily, it was just the first couple minutes. But everything we talked about uh, from before. Is there anything you want to bring up again? No, I'm perfect. I think this away. is the edited version. Perhaps we should do this every single day. Um, we did talk about some stuff before, though. Mrs. Ryan's the college you applied to has I, got coffee delivery via robot now. There's robots. You Look can it up. Just What's the university? It. It, it's at George Mason. George Mason. Virginia. <laughs> but it's been on her mind the whole morning, so yeah. we covered that. Also, the good vibes from yesterday, from having Telefunken here. Um, Tony Fishman and uh, Scott and the whole team, really, from Telefunken, who's been um, interacting with us throughout our little uh, arrangement here. And then also, hearing the stories yesterday, um, the people who are reaching out to me, like V-Dubber for Life and uh, um, his uh, story, history, Connecticut guy, um, Everyone seems to see what we're doing and what they're doing, while both ambitious and totally completely different, they it's absolutely go together 100%. Um, we saw that, obviously, Tony saw that. It's exciting for me to have other people, to have you guys see that, um, and to know that we're gonna be adding music to the show. Just a lot of things that we didn't think would be possible from a little home studio, all of a sudden will be possible thanks to this partnership. So we are, wonderfully excited about it i also want to mention very quickly because i did before and <laughs> jordan i'm so sorry i spoke at this co com at length. Yeah, before believe me um d this is a vlogger who was here yesterday covering the show days d-a-z-e with jordan the lion i spent time on his uh youtube channel last night and i went down the rabbit hole <laughs> he's really got did. some crazy cool stories so i can't imagine what they are the guy has a great personality, um, and then he just puts himself in these locations, these places, uh, be they film locations, like I saw him at the Top Gun house, <laughs> you know, down in San Diego. <laughs> um, <laughs> I saw him in, like, I think Judy Garland's childhood home or something like that. Oh, cool. And then he did a thing with the Sanford and Son truck. He's all over the place, um, and he's just making friends all over the globe with his YouTube channel, getting followers. Like, he's doing what we do, do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just being himself, spreading his positivity. Um, I don't know. Just the vibes from yesterday were so stinking good that I felt the need to mention it. So I did before and now again. And now. And I'll just oh reiterate gosh. again. Like, it was one of my favorite days. <laughs> it was really neat to see everybody and how it all grows and comes out of stuff and to find everyone's connections. And it's yeah. neat to see that you're, uh, pe the people that watched it saw it, too. And For me, I think, um, and I don't know if I mentioned this last time or this time, but that was the first time we met any of those guys. Yeah. You know, we've had a... a a relationship with Tony for a while now uh, and his team, but we had never met. We'd never exchanged a, sh a handshake or a big long hug. You know what I mean? Like and we didn't. Yeah. We didn't know. We just sort of knew it was there. But um, anyway, it was special. Special stuff. So if you didn't watch the show from yesterday with Tony Fishman from Telefunken, highly recommend it. Agreed. I concur. All right, Mrs. R they also gave us a bunch of swag that we opened. <laughs> Really neat. Ah, and then through. I can't reach here, them. Really tons, neat t-shirts. Tons of uh, t-shirts with their new logos on them. Tons of stickers. If you uh, like these stickers and you see us out and about and you would like them for your Porsche or anything, uh, by all means, ask and ye shall receive. It is that simple. Awesome. We are here to spread the telephone and love. Tony, I like the logo. Yeah, everything about it. I feel like I rushed through all that. I feel terrible. I didn't, we gave it so much time last time, and this time I'm like, come on, just speed it's through. It's cleaned up. This is how it goes. All right, good point. Yeah. Thanks for that perspective. I love you, Mrs. Ryan. Um, all right, well, let's bring it in here and start the show again, shall we? Yes. I have um, a video from Paul Kramer from Behind the Orange Curtain. Shall we take a look? Yes, all please. Right. Paul Kramer from Auto Kennel. Paul yeah. Kramer from Auto Kennel. <laughs> 
Uh, behind the orange curtain, what's going on here is uh, when we checked in last the week, car. Tortuga had gotten in oh, a little situation while it was on the 50-year storm rally. Mm-hmm. All right. Checking in. Roll it out. Good morning, Mr. and Mrs. Ryan. This is Paul Kramer from Auto Kennel. Behind the orange curtain at Autobahn Auto Body here in Costa Mesa. And as you can see, La Tortuga's in the background. This is just a quick update. As you can see, they've got a lot of the car apart and they're starting to just look at damage. Um, Obviously dent there, some damage along this brace here, the muffler, et cetera. But the good news is um, so far, no big surprises. Um, I'm gonna get an estimate later today and hopefully we get this car finished for Hill Country Rally. So love you guys, miss you, and I hopefully will see you Friday. Not sure what I'm driving. We'll see. See ya. Well, I love that. I love that he'll be at Breakfast Club. Yeah, <laughs> I would love to see you. I hope everything's as good as it can be over there. You're just so emotionally attached to that car, I think. I don't know why. I mean, he's why. got a dozen cars that he can choose I from. I know, from and I don't know what it is about that car, but I really do love it. You imprinted when you first saw it way back when, I think, when you first met La Tortuga. Yes, it did stick in my brain. Well, there was that. Uh, well, it's actually Mrs. Kramer's car, but the uh, the Beetle yeah. with the you know sort of similarly equipped with the roof rack and the period stuff on the top and everything, the white walls. I think that one was more Mrs. Ryan style. I at the time. That. I just I like <laughs> everything about Paul and Jennifer. I have to agree. Uh, we should also probably mention too that uh, gosh, it's not this week, but it's coming up again. I think it's February 9th. I think the lag two weeks that ago. They yeah, do? lag. Uh, Lazy Auto Kennel Gathering. It's the second Saturday of every month, so I think it's going to be February 9th this month. Um, it's great down at Auto Kennel. Check it out. Come on down. We'll be yeah. there. It's fun. It's yeah. A lot of fun. Uh, Mrs. Ryan, there's that. That's that. Should we check in with the East Coast feed real quick? Yeah. Oh, and then the other thing I forgot. I don't think we did this. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Today is Wednesday, January 23rd, 2019. <laughs> Did we do it the second time? I don't think so. Don't My remember. name is Jay Ryan. This is Nicole Ryan. We are the Ryans, and it's tonight's show. <laughs> it's a disaster show is what it is. I'm so glad Al's here. He's going to clean it up in a minute. He's a pro. Um, all right, check in with the East Coast feed, Mrs. Ryan. This is from the other day, all and right. uh, I didn't play it yesterday because there was so much screaming involved. I didn't want the microphone people. <laughs> to be involved but here we go roll it out what are you talking about Caroline so Friday Night Shenanigans on East Coast Feed with Coraline what is this the window open dinosaurs well. apparently um, happy East Coast <laughs> Feed Friday what's this what's this what's this what's this and dinosaurs huh Okay. <laughs> there you go. Happy East Coast feed, Jay and Nicole. Say hi to Jay and Nicole. You can say hi. It's okay. Oh, no, we're still watching this. I love you guys. <laughs> there you go. Love you guys. <laughs> Happy Friday. So how old, how old is that girl now? Oh, like three maybe? No, it can't three. be that old. Two, I'm thinking though. I'm thinking we might have reached the twos. We're a toddler stage, oh, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, so it makes sense. Almost two and a half. Yeah, makes perfect sense. Yeah. But holy cow, that's a handful. Jeez, and he looks. She's his kid, all right. So happy. She is so his kid. Yeah. Want to do it again? Hi guys. Right. <laughs> See where they are now. Meantime, coming to you from the ball pit. Don't be sad. Nicole. Nicole, please. Brooks here too. Everyone's in the ball pit because you know why? It's a lot of fun. Supporting snowstorm that didn't really happen yesterday, so that kind of sucks. Coraline, you want to show Jay how you're falling the balls? Ah, ready? Jump! Watch this, Jay. Oh, Watch this. See that? Tell Jay Nicole, watch this. Do it again. Show him how you do it. Whoa! There you go. Exactly. I know. I'll get out here. How about this? Whoa! <laughs> Sunday fun day here at the ball pit in Milford. Love you guys. Say bye, bro. Bye. Say bye, Josie. Now. Now. <laughs> there you go. You're right. That's a lot of screaming. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I, you know, it's nice for today, I guess. Of course. Take and the pressure off us for a second. Adorable. 
She is. My okay. gosh. I know. I just Holy can't cow. believe how much she won. Looks like Michelle, yep. the mom, mm-hmm. and uh, acts like Kaz, the dad. <laughs> totally. There you go. <laughs> oh, that's such a great description. All right, kid. Mrs. Ryan, it's time to ask the question that's on everyone's mind. Oh, yeah? What's going on, Mrs. Ryan? Well, Jurassic World is on my mind, and I don't know why the Jurassic Park series, rather. Oh. Um, well, the whole idea of, you know, whatever movie it fits in. You mentioned it something the other day, because it's real now. People are genetically, they're just taking the embryos, locking them up to remake them later. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. You did a thing about a doomsday, a disaster bunker the other day on the news, and it was the equivalent of like a seed farm, you know what I mean, where they, a seed bunker where they keep all the seeds for uh, in case the end of the world, someday to re seed the planet yeah and they're doing it with zoos there's with frozen animals. zoos and blah 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 and i've been watching that movie passengers and it's just I'm, thrown me up there. i'm not a religious guy but are is this not are they not making noah's ark is it ways to protect quite possibly the population after whatever uh, quite so possibly we're there, right we're there we're just there we're there it's the end of it all i think we're there <laughs> i think it, the option is there if you want it but this article is actually about how opals are made, which I did not know because I'm not a girl. But um, the car, the, the the gemstone. Oh, that makes more sense. Yeah, um, they're actually fossilized amber, which I didn't know, and amber is actually fossilized resin, which I didn't know. Did which you see is- Jurassic Park? That's what the mosquito was in in the beginning of the. I know dino the- DNA. <laughs> I know that part, but oh. I don't remember what it's from. And now I know resin it's from tree like sap and pot. Stuff, right? It's what plants make to protect themselves. But it wasn't common knowledge that it's opals blood, the right? next step from mm. uh, amber. So I didn't know. I wouldn't have known that. Are they the same color? I don't even know what color the things are. I think they're. I think opal's green and amber is amber. Um, but um, that would make sense. That's where it comes from. So they're looking into whether that's possible because it might take too long. But it, this how opals are made was interesting. Um, do you remember when I talked about what's now a recent lunar eclipse? Do you remember when I brought that up? Uh, the blood moon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, it was like yesterday or the day before. <laughs> it was. So I do remember it, yes. I talked about it a long time ago because um, they happen every month. But this time. Oh, I didn't, I didn't realize that. Yeah, sometimes there are eclipses, sometimes they're not, but it's a full moon, basically. All I know is every eclipse that happens is like a baseball stat. It's the blah, 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 last one for the blah, 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 yet there seems to be one every week. <laughs> Some of them are partial and they're mis-talked yeah. about, whatever. I'm not knocking it. I just don't really understand it. So I'm I have a better understanding that. of it as- astrologically, which lets me like apply the You can zoom out. Yeah, it. you can zoom yeah. out on that. That's very cool. I've gotten good at that part. But anyway, this time a meteor hit the moon during the eclipse. No, is this true? Because I heard that, but I think, you know, China's on the moon right now, right? Aren't they? Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of things going on on the moon. Did a meteor hit it? All we saw is a flash. Apparently it happens. took a picture on the moon. Right. Apparently it happens quite often. Like the earth has an atmosphere that protects us from like the air and stuff. Like whatever it is, it shields us from a lot of debris and stuff the moon doesn't have that so oh um, so theory well that's what it looks like it does because things have been hitting it non-stop forever right I yeah mean, that's why it's got all those craters theoretically yeah but because it was an eclipse so many people were looking at it so many more people and able to saw see it. it was it both is yeah that why it was darker in that yes so because it. it was darker it was easier to see the flash and other people saw it and they were like oh oh and they got on twitter and social media and they're like what's happening but so and they all went uh oh uh oh yeah <laughs> I went, uh oh. Um, so it's super neat that they're like at least the. I don't know what's neat. It happens it. all the time. Oh, it's neat that we saw one finally. It's neat that we saw one and they're going to like look into what the crater looks like from it and like find oh, it. Oh, I see. And, that, that's cool. Yeah. It's super neat to me. What else? Um, it in, seems like more justification to go back to the moon to me. Here's the deal. Th- there's I'm enough- not saying I don't want to go back to the moon. I just, you know, given the... There's a rover typical- already up there that they're not going to reroute to go look for. it. They're like, if we get to it, great. That thing doesn't work anymore, does it? From 1969? No, it, about? it's not really called a rover. It's called something else. It's not something the lunar else. Rover. I don't remember what it's called. It's, I don't fine. think right, it's a lunar rover. This is crazy. They're not even going to go look at it right now. So whatever. But they're going to get there eventually. But it was neat that people saw it. I remember on Top Gear a couple of years ago when it was still Top Gear with the old guys and James May drove what was supposed to be the new lunar module should we ever go yeah. back to the moon blah 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 it was 
neat thing. But I mean, so my point is, uh, people are working on everything. It depends on where you look. Totally. And I can learn and glean all the information from them, and totally. I will. Good for you. Uh, that's my stance. As long as the internet's still on, you got a shot. <sighs> and if not, I'll just like really try to remember Space Camp other than that guy that gave me a weird ring. Um, she I was did 12. go to Space Camp. I don't know the rest of that, but she did go yeah, to Space I didn't, Camp. Yeah, it was Coral. It broke. Um, anyway, in new evolutionary research, um, they're looking at the more of the role that temperature plays in nature which apparently uh, somehow they didn't really take it into consideration before it was like one environmental factor that scientists just ignored i don't know why you're saying this stuff i don't think that's true maybe this scientist from this thing wasn't looking at it it wasn't an overarching from when factor I was a kid, it's in always been an issue all from, of from, the, from, the, from the from the fact that we used to have ice ages and the whole place is burnt before totally totally <laughs> that's been an issue if you've been looking at like ecological stuff and whatever but it hasn't been factored into like animals and humans uh, and how they grow i haven't had a chance to look there yet or yes Yes, correct. Anyway, but new evolutionary research is being done um, that is on focusing on dragonflies, and they're mm. using it to apply it broader for the coloring of animals, which includes humans. Um, like, why we're different colors? And it's like um, they're finding that dragonflies, it's mostly males, I think, that have the colors in their, fly, in their wings, but their darker ones are cause dragonflies to overheat it's like going outside with a dark sweater on makes perfect sense yeah so they're dark absorbs light light reflects light totally and so now or they're heat. like why Energy. do lions have different color manes and why do birds have different colors so they're looking at like mm -hmm. maybe it's, it's temperature related um and then finally oh my. lots of information on this is still coming out but Uber is behind a new technology that allows those, um, you know, those like city bikes that people share and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's letting, it's making it so that they can return themselves to a charging station. That's nuts to me. Well, then they should be able to ride you around town too, right? They might. That's like the next step. So like, I didn't want to really talk about that part because it scares the bejesus out of me. But, like, can you imagine just going to a city and seeing these, like, unmanned scooters and bikes? But, like, no, uh, but also I can't imagine even seeing it in a regular city because I haven't been to Santa Monica since this whole thing started. You know what I mean? We yeah. used to live over there and we're there. Once we moved away, we were happy to move away. It just got too city-like. Uh, it used to be a beautiful beach community. <laughs> yeah. <now laughs> and it turned it's, into Silicon yeah. Beach and it's a full-blown city. Um, since that's all happened, like, I haven't we moved away and I've sort of been looking the other direction pretending that that's not a, an issue yet all I hear about in every report and story is that there's just piles of scooters and bikes everywhere yeah well, this and they're like that it's a problem I've heard that also and I kind of thought it might be because like pedestrians can't walk down the street anymore because it's all scooters and bikes that's crazy well this is a solve all right. What else? So that's, that's it that's what's been going what's going on, on Mrs. Ryan dun 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 Good job, Mrs. Ryan. Nerd thing. All right. Well, I'm exhausted from that show and a half that we just started with. <laughs> Sorry we went so long, Al. <laughs> uh, in just a few minutes, we will be back. Al Desharm is here. Uh, we're going to turn this whole thing around. It's going to be fun. Cool. See you in a few. More to come.
Oh, you're almost okay. going up there. Yeah, yeah. All right, welcome back, everybody. We are here with Al Desharm. Al, pleasure to see you. Thanks for having me. This is great. I Thanks for it. being here, man. Put that wherever you're comfortable, which is, you don't have to be straight up on it, but, but that's perfect. That's where most guests use it, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell. Yes, there we go. How's that? We, are we, is that pretty good distance right there? It's fantastic. All it's right. fantastic. I'm going to have Mrs. Ryan. Uh, you, what was it that you were talking about right before the show? Uh, you guys. The robots? Mm, no, no, no. You guys. You guys had something in oh, common. Do you recall what that was? We were sharing recipes. Manhattan? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Talk about it for a second while I move the <laughs> and camera. Recipes. I forgot to move. <laughs> I made a horrible cake that everyone made fun of on social media, and they were right to do so because it was too sweet. But I too sweet? I don't know about that. I frosted it, and I put too much frosting on it. Well, that's so the way to eat sweet. half the frosting, and then there you go. <laughs> don't waste it. <laughs> I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to eat it, but it was, it was a fail. I'm a, I'm a cake fan. I like cakes. Really? Any shape or flavor anything yes I'm a what, do you have guy. a bakery that you like uh well you when live I was in new york here yeah see new there york was magnolia mm-hmm. was the one mm-hmm. yeah there we go the magnolia go. cupcake <laughs> wow <laughs> whatever everyone went nuts for that it's pretty good but it's a cupcake i know it's a cupcake. <laughs> 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 i never got in line let's put it that way i didn't do the Let's get a cupcake. Wait, is that one of those, minutes. like Central Park and yeah. everything? The they pop-ups? all go through that. What was the other one? Pinkberry was like that in the yep. beginning. Everybody's like, ah, yogurt. So like, You've just... lived out here for a minute. Pink's hot dogs. Yes. It was like it's that. It's like a hot dog. Was it the Sprinkles cupcakes? Is that what it was? Yeah. Was that the hot one? Out here, there yeah, a, yeah, yeah. there have been a yes. bunch, yeah. My goodness. Um, what's happening, man? It's very nice to meet you. Thank Pleasure. you for coming over to our home and doing our little little program I'm here. I'm digging this. I'm digging your whole setup here because it's it's has a, it's a real studio, but it's in your home. <laughs> and uh, I was reading in the uh, Studio City Patch, which is the crime blog. That's right. and it's a police a, blotter, basically. <laughs> yeah, a police blotter. And uh, one of the things I remember reading uh, a, a, a while back was that there was a lot of... Uh, showbiz memorabilia uh, being stolen ah. this is a nice desk where is this from <laughs> if only you knew uh the desk is totally above board but you probably don't know the microphone story so we'll send you a link on that one after. Um, but this is the original letterman yeah. desk from wow yes. that's the real david letterman uh d- desk and the guest chairs that you're sitting in that and the awesome. microphone yeah, and this from is like, the and this is the Farley chair, right? The Chris Farley chair. Yep, that's what we're calling it because he tumbled over the the, <laughs> the off the that. riser on the hold. I've broken your equipment. He rolls over in the thing. <laughs> uh, he was the funny. greatest. And too now funny. you you're on. All right, so we should say for everybody else, um, you're here not really to plug anything, but you are working on a shit ton of stuff that we're all going to talk about. Uh, one of the things is F for Family, the Netflix show. F is for Family on Netflix. Uh, it's a uh, Bill Burr and uh, it's Bill Burr creation along with mike price they co-created it and uh, uh it's a an adult animated show so. so it's a little vulgar a little but, vulgar uh, <laughs> it's a lot vulgar it's, it's bill burr it's, it's bill burr it's, it's, and him. uh bill's a buddy of mine from back in the day yeah. and uh when he uh, uh they got the green light for season three he said he had me in the back of his mind always and uh because i i, I do the voices like uh, I do some ah. characters and such. Well, you almost went into Bill Burr right before the show without yeah. even doing Bill Burr. I was like, well, that sounds like Bill Burr. <laughs> I thought that too. <laughs> well, we're from the same region, so we have some of the same cadence. But uh, Where are you from? Uh, I'm originally from Rhode Island, but uh, I escaped. Whereabouts and, uh, in Rhode Island? <laughs> Cranston, just outside of Providence. And um, I'm a Connecticut kid, so I'm oh, you're a Connecticut northeast, kid. yeah. Ah, all yeah. right. Northeast. We spent a lot of time in Newport. In the Newport uh, Newport area, anyway. Area. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, I loved. I spent some time down in Newport. It was. Uh, they had the, the mansions. We used to break into them. Break into the breakers. Yeah, break, we broke into the breakers. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Vanderbilt. I was from the other side I of the track. Been there. <laughs> yeah, it's gorgeous there. Yes. Yeah. We no, do- it is. Really, it is. The Ocean State. It's it's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, that's where we drove along that road that was along the ocean. Short, mm-hmm. I believe Cliff Shoreline Drive or whatever sure. they call it. Sure. <laughs> cliff walk. Yeah, by the cliff walk, exactly. Yes. All right, so you're from Rhode Island. So I'm from Rhode Island. Bill's from Massachusetts. We, and the show we also. met we it, it takes place kind of in uh, generic New England. Generic New England, upstate New York kind of hybrid cuz the voices come out almost but there's a little oh, bit yeah, of there's, maniac, there's definitely there's a little Rhode Island. Yes, it's a it's a mix a match. Wawick. match. Yes. Absolutely. So I will slip into it from time to time myself, but uh, I stepped over everything you were saying there. Sorry about that. I'm trying to like the whole regional aspect of it. I was trying to nail down because there's something familiar about you, and it's not just that you're familiar. 
Does that make sense? Yeah, the regionalism could be part of it. Oh, absolutely. It yeah, oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Um, my character's name, the main character I play is Anthony, although I do several voices. You do a couple, yeah. But uh, the main character is a new character on season three. His name is Anthony, hashtag soft spot. He's, um, he has glasses <laughs> that are this big, um, and um, he's kind of annoying. Matter of fact, you showed the, the clip of the little girl, the toddler on oh, the yeah. toilet, which... You know, I love to follow. Um, <laughs> she's amazing. That little girl is amazing. There's oh, yeah. so much going on there uh, beyond <laughs> beyond two years old. And uh, But she actually reminded me of the character that I'm portraying, which oh, is Anthony, gosh. which is actually something I developed myself. Uh, it's actually a character from my comedy, my stand-up comedy act. Really? And <laughs> that particular clip of that piece was what Bill showed the producers and the showrunner and for F is the fan Netflix fan. people. And they said, bring him in. And then the next thing I know, he says, you're coming to the table, Reed. And then I'm, you know, I'm there with all these huge people. It's executive produced by Vince Vaughn. It, yeah. Oh my gosh. Stars, I, uh, Laura I, Dern. Used to, I worked on the first, he, Peter Billingsley was yes, Peter. someone I worked with for years and he was so excited to have the show and to work with Bill, but it was years ago. This is the same show? Mm-hmm. Well, it started, Are you kidding? started I remember all of that. It. And Joey, wor- Joey writes on it. Like I didn't realize. We know so it's, many people. Oh, you know the writers so funny. Uh, Yeah. Some oh. of them, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. She used to be a publicist, so she used oh, to okay. work with all of these people. So this was in the making from 2014, 2015. Yeah, it was way back then. It was like, because Peter, we, um, we, we were, he was launching the, a Christmas Story musical and right. all that stuff. So I was more involved in that stuff, but F is for Family was happening. And so he was and always on He was excited on about it. Yeah. So excited about it. Well, he's partners, it. Or business with partners Vince. with Vince Vaughn. Yeah. Wild, wild know, West. We're just telling this for our, the folks at home. For the folks at home. For the folks at home. Where's the camera? There's cameras everywhere. There's cameras everywhere. Yours would be right here if you ever want to deliver right to four there. Deliver to four. Yep. And then the group shot would be the three over there. And then we got Mrs. Ryan and myself over here on two. Oh, cool. Nice wide on five. Wide on five. <laughs> Next on wide on five. <laughs> That's right. Wide on five traffic. Let's Actually, go down there now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all that. Um, <laughs> it was live at five back in the day with Letterman across the hall, right? Right. Live at five. And he used to sometimes crash. Them. Oh, yeah. That's great. <laughs> that's funny. Um, but anyways, yeah, so this, this, that's how it all came about. But it's Laura Dern, uh, Sam Rockwell. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the, the names go on. I'm going to leave somebody out. I know it. But uh, if you go to F is for Family, look up the cast members, <laughs> and you're going to see – you'll see big you'll stars, see and then you'll see these – obviously voiceover artists that do this for 30 years and uh i'm the new guy i'm the new kid on the block i'm the runt of the litter and i'm very happy do you we have mo collins way? from mad tv mo collins she's on fear of the walking dead right now oh. and uh so it's like uh, uh debbie derryberry who's my guru she's the she's the uh she's johnny neutron remember uh the, the cartoon? Uh, jimmy neutron I, I, wow i screwed that johnny up. rocket Something like that. Jimmy Neutron, I screwed it up. I knew I was going to mess that up. But anyways, there's all these people that are involved, and then me. So it's That's how cool. you feel. I don't think that they probably feel yeah. that same way. That's your perspective. I, well, I'll tell you what. When I went to the table read, I was very comfortable. I said, oh, I belong here. This is where I belong. You said that or you felt it? I, I had to tell you myself. You declared it? I declared <laughs> it. I do declare! <laughs> no, I mean, because I was going into this big... Thing. It's and intimidating, right? I, I thought we we're going to have a table read. I'm like, oh, it's going to be like 12, 15 people in the room. Ooh, no. It was a hotel uh, a ballroom. The network, yeah, I'm was, assuming, is there. There was like 100 people. Yeah. And it was so, it was a little intimidating on that, but uh, I felt comfortable. I was like, okay. That's awesome. Because I had done a lot of voiceover in the past, and but nothing like. Well, this. you said you do characters in your act. In my comedy act, yes. Yeah, but not impressions. These are original characters. Original characters. Although when I first started out many, many years ago doing stand-up comedy, I did do impressions. And I was kind of an impressionist. Oh, my gosh. And then I weaned into doing original characters from my life. Mm. Who did you start with? How, and and how, how did you start with the uh, impressions? Well, Generally, I, it's young people, and it usually starts uh, with like, the same couple. I remember doing uh, Al Pacino as Scarface, oh, wow. and then I would just drop the F-bomb 40 times. <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> hmm, I'm in show business. No, no, at that point, at that <laughs> point. Not now, not now. <laughs> 29, folks. Put the mic wherever you feel more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> a comedian was electrified on a talk show a in talk someone's show. home. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> Thanks for your patience, by the way, with our false start earlier. <laughs> oh, no, no, I felt for you. I was standing in the background when they had a, a, a false oh. start and one button was missed. Oh, and it was painful. When you're doing your own production and you're, as we know, writer, director, uh, uh, talent, there's a lot of things going on. I've missed that button before. Oh. I'm like, hold on, everybody. On your podcast. Seven minutes in. Hold on, yeah, everybody. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. Oh, man. I mean, it could be wor- we could have been sitting here talking, that which has awesome. also happened before. And then you guys could have contacted me. Hey, Al, can you just, like, we're going to send you a copy. Can you just uh, do the voiceover since that's what you do? <laughs> yeah, just ADR the whole ADR. fucking thing. Do you mind? <laughs> <laughs> and if you can hour. turn it, we, this has to go up by 11:30 if that's all right tonight. <laughs> that's hysterical. That's hysterical. Um, all right. So the impressions and maybe how you got into comedy. I, I know that's kind of trite, but as somebody who sort of never pursued it and is sort of mm, tiptoeing around it now, I'm yeah. really, really curious for people who actually do it professionally and how they started. Well, back in the day, when I was a kid, <laughs> they had a talent show. It was called. Uh, uh, it was at Periwinkles. Periwinkles was a uh, a lunch place during the day that catered to the uh, s- people that worked for the state, the state house in downtown Providence. And they would come there at, at night. It was just this empty space. So the owner said, "Hey, I want to get something going." So he had Monday night football, and then on Wednesdays he had open mic talent night. And it was uh, awesome. singers and magicians. It was it was a freak show. It was a circus, Whoa. and comedians. <laughs> um, so I I actually had a, a comedy partner, and we we put together five minutes of material. We, we do like a back and forth thing, and we kind of we we did well. We actually did well, and we were invited to come back two weeks later, and we were all confident. We're like, oh my goodness, we're stars! <laughs> and we went back and we tanked and we got booed. Uh. And they had the hook, and a hook came out. A liter- a legitimately, like an old vaudeville hook. Yeah, like a hook, and yep, an old vaudeville hook, and they they put it around our waist, so it was gigantic, <laughs> and pulled us off the stage. And the people that were running it thought it was hysterical that we we actually made them laugh because we were bombing so poorly, or badly, or, Maybe whatever, or, or well, bombing well, <laughs> bombing so well, and not well. So we. Um, mm. Bombing well, yeah. You're we uh, that was the end of our comedy team right then. <laughs> so we started doing it solo, and then I went back and um, I put together another four or five minutes. And they said, "Wow, we we like what you do. Come on the weekend show." So they invited me on the weekend. After show. After your first uh, uh, solo, it was a couple. It was it okay. was a few, a few. In and they they said, "Come on in." So I basically opened up. I went on first. And uh, how old were you at that point? I don't talk about age. Oh, you not at all. Oh, yeah. sorry. Talk about about okay, sure. All right. I'm in show business. Got it. Um, I I was actually um, I was in high school, so I was uh, 17 the first time. So I think I was around 18 when I went solo. Wow, yeah, that's I, amazing. I, I, yeah. So then when I was in college, I actually started doing stand-up comedy full time. Where was college? Rhode Island College. Mm. A, 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 a it's right right next to Providence College, <laughs> across the river from Brown. Nowhere near Rit. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Nowhere near Rit. <laughs> no, no, no. School um, design, no. <laughs> not too far away. Not, not too away from Seth MacFarlane land. Seth MacFarlane. Oh, he's from up there too, right? Oh, that's right. That yeah, show he, also is yeah, uh, Rhode he, Island. Uh, uh, f- uh, what is it? Furry Door Productions? Is that mm-hmm. what they call it? The... Is, what, do you have a story for Furry Door? <laughs> no, it, it was actually a door. His, his, am I pronouncing it correctly? Furry fuzzy door? door. Fuzzy Door, I think. Fuzzy, fuzzy Door. See, yeah. I'm... For, I furry door is a different door, fella. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go furry knocking door. on the furry door. That's a comic The furry back door is the worst. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> or the best. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, hiding a rabbit? Horrible. Uh, anyways, what did, sit on, what did you sit on, a cat? <laughs> hey, there is a cat involved. In yeah, this, right? locked in the other room, though, in <laughs> case you're allergic. No. I'm I'm fine with that. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm I'll a, go I'm, get her. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a pussy magnet. Hey. <laughs> so, anyways. <laughs> but you know, that was on the other side of the river, the uh, Seth MacFarlane crew. But uh, so, what does that mean? You said the other side of the tracks. You've now said the other side of the river. Are we talking about affluency? <laughs> yeah, uh, well, you know, I went to a state college. It was a poor man's college. And uh, where was I, it located again? <laughs> 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 um, but uh, I so I was involved in stand-up comedy uh, I was also a theater major and so I was doing uh, stage productions and such but the stand-up comedy took over did so you did a lot of tech when you were doing theater I'm assuming I did both so if I wasn't in the production I was doing tech 
I was the same way through high school and stuff. So you get this then. I just I made do. a little black box I'm theater out of our library. I'm impressed by this. You understand. I already... Uh, but that's I already, all it is. I text my wife. We're going to do our podcast here next week. Oh, did, good. Did Come you on tell in. him? No. <laughs> no, that's so funny. That's all right. That would be great. Um, we, you want to get into that? Should we talk about your podcast? <laughs> sure. What the uh, heck? Let's see. It's called Bernie and Al. It's on hiatus at the moment. It's on hiatus at the moment. Uh, my wife and I uh, were both stand-up comedians, and we met in a comedy club. Uh, did you know that? No. Did you know that? No. Would you like uh, to know more? I do. <laughs> I would. <laughs> We're a 9-11 hookup, so we were living in New York City at the time, and then when the jets flew into the buildings, uh, we said, I guess we should have sex. Didn't you see speed? I, I You're not supposed, relationships based on, <laughs> on extreme circumstances don't work out. I don't know. It's, that was it's the work, message of that work, film. It's working out. <laughs> Good for you. So well, you, what happened? You, I mean, you saw speed too. That's why. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, did. That crazy. ship is out of control, man. Uh, I had that cruise movie. Um, so what do you mean? Like you? Did you know each other pre nine eleven? Yes, we okay. were friends. We were hanging out with the same cluster of comedians. We were. We'd have like writing sessions. We'd meet at the coffee shop. It was kind of like friends on crack uh, comedians and dysfunction and and uh jaded conversations yeah. bunch so, of angry young people right yeah angry yeah. young people and uh of course when the jets uh, hit the buildings then we're like okay You're like they were way well, angrier than we are we've always been attracted to one another right <gasps> now it's the time <laughs> is that true it was yeah. one of those like we just don't know so why not somewhat Holy cow, yeah. that's yeah. incredible yeah, 9 hookup yeah. wow we were very similar just without the 9 11. We were like, eh, whatever. Yeah, just yeah, uh, make it happen, yeah. right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. It was a similar thing. We met over absolutely no circumstance, no nothing. We, we, we I hate to make this about us, but no. we literally met at her apartment through a mutual friend who had double booked. Like, had, I'm oh. supposed to hang out with me that night, but they did a little too much drinking during the day. So they ended up staying at her place. Why don't you just come over here? We hit it off. Actually, we didn't so at all. We hated each other. Hated, hated each other, but eventually we were just like, ah. They hated each other after the fact. No, we, we, did. we didn't care for each other that oh. that day, and then as the night progressed, the animosity turned into something ah, else. Ah, turned the corner. Mm-hmm. Wow, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So I guess that makes for the best chemistry. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> so about Bernie, who is your wife. Well, we also live together. <laughs> in your own production space, which is true. <laughs> which is true. And But the thing with us is uh, we're, we're because we're comedians, we're either together 24-7 or we spend a week or two apart from one mm-hmm. another. So we get to rekindle things. But at, when we spend two or three weeks together 24 7 at the end of the two or three weeks we're like see you later yeah <laughs> but then when we're, of course when we're absent Love. Hey. would you say that breaks are good <laughs> i'm saying it's working for us i'm saying it's working out i think maybe your first business trip <laughs> when we met maybe your very first business trip when we met I don't remember something or other. Oh, I don't. She was away already, and blah, 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 I'm so sorry. Blah, blah, blah. And I think I just texted back like, it "Breaks are good." You know what I mean? Like meaning good things out of yeah. it. I'm not trying to be like I'm enjoying this time without you. <laughs> but of course, that's what was that's heard. How I that's took what it, was received. That's what girls do. Absent makes come on now. Makes a heart grow fonder. I know that now, but I was a brat. She was, was thinking out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. Well. Yeah. There's also the male female thing, and sometimes I'm accused of being the female in my relationship too, but. I do. Notice. I am the female in our relationship. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, I just wanted to put that out there. But yeah, okay, I'll leave it at that. Except for that. Well, I mean, I designed this place. You know what I mean? This is all my thing. She used to run really fancy, expensive people's lives. You know what ah. I mean? So it's a whole different mindset. I got you. I got you. Um, so let's talk about the podcast, though, that you do with your wife. That you're on hiatus for. What? What? What is it? Would you guys just talk well, about it's, you? Or uh, it's basically two comics, and we usually have a guest and. Uh, I was anti having a guest because logistically with the travel, no, no, this stand on top fine. of it is a ha- is a hassle. Yeah, it, it's a hassle. But now the technology has changed; we actually can do it. But uh, so we're going to reboot it, and we're just going to do it remotely. And again, you can do split screen if you want to do a, a video sure. version of it. And, we just uh, we haven't done it yet, but we just added the uh, ability to do a like a live. You know, you could be somewhere mm-hmm. else, and we do a via satellite type of thing, via satellite, <laughs> oh, <laughs> via the <really>? interwebs. <laughs> right, but if I'm on a cruise ship and the cruise ship is going like this and the satellite is going like that, you know, it's yeah, maybe that, that might be rough. Yeah, but 
we're going to give it a go. We're going to try it. So cool. Yeah, but basically, it's comics, and we talk about um, any subject matter whatsoever, and sometimes it's, it gets quite serious. We, we talk about We had uh, two people on. It was about uh, gun safety and gun control and gun rights. So we had... What would you guys talk about? Anti... <laughs> well, Guns? <laughs> anti and pro. Yeah. yeah, that's nice so to have to, to have the conversation. Yes, though. It was neat that absolutely. you had both that you attacked it from both sides. We that's do. A, yeah, always oh, interesting. Sorry. Yeah, that's what it's about to me. Absolutely, I fully agree. Um, uh, your willingness, though, to have someone in, I think, says a lot about you and maybe your confidence and comfort level. To have some, you know, to have an, an NRA person sitting on the chair over there when I'm I've never fired a gun in my life. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's just. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it, it, it's it's interesting because I'm, I feel like I'm kind of in that middle area of, I hate to say centrist because you get no respect and people go, pick a side. Yeah, but get I'm off kinda, the fence. I like to hear both sides and make my own decision, and that's just where I'm at. And yeah. m- my wife is a communist. <laughs> <laughs> he just named names. Wow. <laughs> But it's by a lover. Can't I, wait to, I love and adore her. Can't wait to meet so, that lady. I can't wait to listen to this When the shit hits podcast. the fan, you know, I have a 50% chance of making it. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, but other stuff you're working on then. Other than the podcast, you do a web series as well, right? I have a web series, and I'm going to tell you the way that I mentioned it earlier before okay. we started, was that um, <laughs> I preface it with it's about two 1950s moronic detectives called the two dicks and it's foolish and the episodes are anywhere from two and a half to five minutes long and it's just absurd uh we started doing it with just the two of us but now we've added to the cast so we have uh sometimes we have comedians on uh who's the other one you oh, and- i'm sorry al romas is okay. the other established comedian so you're we, the two dicks you and al romas we are the two dicks clearly the two dicks it and, is uh, hilarious oh thank you so you're the much. tall skinny one i mean it, it harkens back to like <laughs> the comedy duo everything yes. yeah you and gotta like, have a comedy duo it's just stereotypes it's, it's almost, not anything it's, but it's hilarious you, can you guys throw in the laurel and hardy category yeah Abbott and costello versus, uh, yeah, Abbott and yeah costello combination yes hybrid. that's where i went of course yes any oh. combination at all. Were you into those guys uh, when you were growing up? That oh, type I of love comedy? all that stuff, yeah. yeah. But you're not, we're not going to, I have no idea how old you are. <laughs> but you're not old enough to <laughs> but have. But I love Will have... Farrell and uh, John C. Riley as well. I mean, their chemistry is hysterical. We love Step Brothers. Not yeah. knocking oh. that. But I came from the old stuff as well because my dad celebrated the old stuff. My dad used to go to the Ed Sullivan Theater on Saturday nights to go watch The Honeymooners be taped when he was a kid. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, that's amazing. That, that's that's really me. rad. Yeah, so we're, we're in the same ballpark so i grew up with abbott and costello three stooges all of that stuff from back then smothers brothers well you gotta remember we had uh, we didn't have the choices of watching so many different things we had three channels yeah and one tv or but uh, i remember when we we actually had cable installed you know we just had the antenna on the roof the world got bigger the world got bigger when we got cable we had all this stuff and you could see whatever you thought was your world is like wait there's so much more out there yeah, yeah I've, i have a vague recollection of that too it's so weird <laughs> well no because we i moved a lot and sometimes we had cable and sometimes we didn't so mm-hmm. like that moment of like installation like came later but like it's weird to think about mm. did i go on a tangent no no no, no. that was no no two dicks yeah the two, so two dicks are just looking at you is all <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> so funny. So, anyways, I've been inspired by all that stuff. Uh, not also the Pink Panther. I love the Pink Panther. Oh stuff. yeah, oh, Peter oh, Sellers. Peter anything Sellers, yeah. murder by death for me. Peter oh. Sellers, I love. Oh, just killed me. I just actually did a little short. Uh, uh, it was kind of a salute my hat to uh, the uh, Peter Sellers and the Pink Panther. What did you do? What was it? What was the? Premise? It's just a little uh, less than two minute thing. I actually just mimicked. One of the scenes, the fighting scenes with, with Kato. Kato, of course. And I play both roles. So <laughs> <laughs> he used to Inspector Clouseau to stay sharp. He hired a little male companion who would surprise him and with martial arts because he always wanted to stay on his on his toes. Like, like crazy shit. They've spoofed this in so many movies, but like they would ruin the apartment or the building or the car or whatever they were in and around just to simply. <laughs> and then so at the end, uh, 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 phone call. You know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so he'd come home casually with groceries and he would say, Kato, are you home? 
they didn't hear anything. Then he knew it was on. So he put the groceries down. He start looking for him. Because ninjas pulling about. doors up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kato would be hiding somewhere, and then they would finally have this big fighting scene and trash the place. And the neighbors would be like, "What the hell is going on?" And it was just hysterical. <laughs> and it was uh, uh, Blake Edwards was the of course uh, the director, yeah, creator and director of that. Yeah. Hilarious. Did you ever see Sob? I did. What'd you yeah. think? I love I re- half of it. I haven't seen it. In, <laughs> I haven't seen it in yeah. 30 years. But, yeah. uh, That's him too, though, right? I'm right. Yes. Like Edward, yeah. Yeah. It's the one with Ju- Julie, Ju- uh, who, who Julie Andrews. Julie Andrews. She's Mary Poppins and uh, whatever. Not, not the right of music. one. The sound of music. That's the right one. Which was his wife in real life. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And in the movie, it's the same story, the director oh. and the ex-wife, I believe. But uh, she's this wholesome character who, whatever, they get her to do a topless movie. It's like he's going to be his swan song kind of thing. Mm. And it's all about the business. And SOB Producer. stands for Standard Operational Bullshit. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's a great movie you from know, the 70s. It it's a, it's, 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 There's it's a again, lot of not... great 70s movies, really are. It's a, it's a great decade for films. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's neat. Well, I can't think of his name. I'm drawing a blank. But the guy from Network uh, is the main, uh, he plays Cully, Cuddy or Cully or whatever. That was the main guy the from guy Network. The guy from Soap. He was in. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's the main guy from Empty Nest, too. Right, right, <laughs> the right. The guy right. you like. The, the old guy? He's, yeah, I yeah. I'm drawing a blank on all the names. He saved someone out of the freezer. Oh, I can't God, even get so fuzzy funny. and furry door right. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> Careful where you go. I forgot. One is my wife's nickname. What? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Good <laughs> Sorry. Oh my God, comedy. <laughs> Do you, uh, are you into cars in any way, shape, or form? I am, as a matter of fact. Are you really? I am a little bit. What, uh, what kind of stuff? Well, when do you I was like? in high school, I, I worked in an auto body shop. Doing what? Which was very bad for your health, but I, <laughs> I had the, I had the job of, I was horrible at doing the work, so they would always make me go get the cars. And so we'd get these cars, uh, exotic vehicles from all these rich people, and we'd <laughs> modify them or repair them. Mm. So I was, here I am, 17, 18 years old, driving 1958 Rolls Royces, oh, uh, man. Uh, Ferraris, all these antique vehicles. In Rhode I'd Island? Go, uh, in Rhode Island, yeah, yeah. And Whoa. This was on the other side of the tracks in River. We, just, we would yeah. go to these car <laughs> shows. We'd go down to Atlantic City. And my boss at the time sometimes was too cheap to, to hire a truck to put them on the truck. So we'd drive these old antique cars up the coast. And we'd go, we'd go the scenic route because he didn't want to take them up on the highway because some of them wouldn't go more than 35 miles an hour. Rock chips so go and everything up, else. It would, take us, it would take us like a day to yeah. drive four hours. It would take wow. us like eight hours, nine hours. But I've driven all these phenomenal vehicles, so I've had the bug. And I had a, I had a 68 Mustang. I had, oh, that's a cool um, car. Yeah, it was, you know, uh, I didn't have the six-cylinder, but it was okay. Uh, <laughs> I just let go of a 1965 uh, Mercury Montclair with the breezeway window that went down Ooh. the back. And was I that was the just... also Mustang-ish looking car? Was it a no, smaller? No, it was actually um, the Ford son Etzel uh, was given um, control of the Mercury division, which was a new division, I guess, at the time. Mm. So it was between the Galaxy 500 and the Lincoln. Uh, so it was like I was a Lincoln. Because it was a nicer car. I remember it the Mercury's being it was, nicer than it was, Ford's. It was for people that couldn't afford the Lincoln but wanted a better car than the Galaxy 500. So they made this whole division. Mid Yeah. Yeah. So they made a, a, a few of them, and one of them was the Montclair. And the whole thing was. You didn't need an air conditioner because it had the breezeway window, and the window was electronic, and it would slide behind the back seat, and it would circulate. Did and it work? Not in this no. part of the country. Not in Southern California. Oh, the heat and everything. Yeah. It's recycled so, so a lot air. of people would have the. Aftermarket. I was wondering if it was going to be even exhaust. They put the fumes, aftermarket market what... air conditioners in. Yeah. yeah. Like the ones in the windows that stick in a house. No. no. <laughs> well, yeah, no. <laughs> Why not? No, it's but kind of. it would stick underneath the dashboard, yeah. so you're not it's too kind far of. off. It That's would. Really it was cool. like modified. You could. Have, you had no leg room because it was just a big, <laughs> big <laughs> hunk of metal. The horses are the same way. Yeah. It was the same way when you add them later. Yeah. Aftermarket, so but yes, same concept, but great. Not like, <laughs> <laughs> not like that. But yeah. Oh man! But um, yes, I do love cars, and I, I I was actually restoring this one, and then I just got to a certain point after a couple of years. I said I just got to let it go. I'm not and someone it. kept saying, "Hey, you're gonna sell it? You're gonna sell?" It? My neighbor he goes, "I think I have a buddy's." On it. Finally, I said, "Okay." Um, uh, we, we we he put us in touch with him, and then he came by and went, "Yeah, I want to buy it. I want to buy it." And then he was. He disappeared. Oh, no kidding. And I'm like, yeah, I never heard back from the guy. And then, so I just, I called some other guy randomly and he came by. He goes, 
He offered me like twice as much money cash. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Like, Here, goodbye. So that's it. Goodbye. Well, good for and you. And then a few weeks later, hey, you still got it? No, it's gone. Sorry. Oh, I wanted it. I go, I didn't hear from you. Yeah. <laughs> made made some money, too. <laughs> I made some money as well, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to get into another vehicle. Cool. But the, the Porsche thing, uh, <clears throat> I don't understand the Porsche. Enough. I've been in a Porsche twice. I drove it once, and it, I can understand the addiction. It's It's a different thing. It's a different thing. It's a different animal. 911? Yeah. 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 It is weird. It got under my skin, too. I was BMW for a long time. And then once I had the engine behind me and learned the engine behind me, it was a totally different thing. Can't drive anything else. Yeah. I get Seinfeld where he's like, I'm only into these. I I get it. He Seinfeld lived three blocks from me in New York City, and he bought a garage. You may know this. He uh, He bought a brownstone, basically, almost like a brownstone, and turned it into a two or three story Porsche garage. Really? Just a garage? Just a garage. And it was down the street from one of his homes, but he had a home uh, by Central Park West. And uh, sitcom money. And uh, (laughs) But he he has a collection. He has a collection of Porsches. Yeah. He's got an airplane hanger out here as well. He buys them as is, and he doesn't like to restore them. He just just keeps them. And I would see him and George Wallace in like this antique Porsche driving around Manhattan all the time. George Wallace is in the car too. I didn't know that. Yeah. No, that's kidding. a random I mean, combination. They're, they're, they're buddies, too. so <laughs> old school. And I've opened guys. up for both of them. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been offered a ride in a Porsche. <laughs> I wave at them, and Jerry's like, "Yeah, oh, yeah." I, no, no, I'm a comedian. I opened up for you. We're the opposite. We see Jerry all the time, and they have no idea who the hell we are. You know, him and Spike, and just like whatever. It's okay. We're not at that level yet. Someday. It's all right. It's all right. Um, let's see. Chastler. You're here because of Chastler. Chastler's yes. one of those people that I find Chastler. very interesting. Uh, I love him. I thought he was going to be here. Typical Chastler. I might be there, and he's not here. He connected us. That was that was. Nice oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, he does show up sometimes, but okay. you know, he's a busy fella. Um, how do you know him? Com- uh, I just threw comedy from, oh, 20, 25 years ago. Seriously? Uh, when I was coming out here, I had some comedian friends out this way, and they were all kind of in a group, and they introduced me to him, and then I... Occasionally would bump into him. Of course, social media, mm. Instagram, Facebook brings you shrinks the world together. It's, it's so funny with social media. I don't miss people. I saw someone the other day. I hadn't seen them in like six years. I'm like, hey, what's up? Yeah. Buddy? They're like, hey, man, I haven't seen you in six years. I'm like, what? Didn't I see you like last week? But I know what you did on Tuesday. That's yeah. right. I know you <laughs> ate. I knew where you were. I knew who you were with. It's weird, uh, right? It is weird. It is bizarre. I feel like that too. It's ma- it makes that part of it easier. The transparency is weird to me. I'm having a hard time getting over that. You know what I mean? That we sort of live our lives out here now, and in our, we're in our home. We don't feel like we're putting it out there, but we're putting it out there. Mm. You know what I mean? It's weird. You must deal with that too, with your anything you do, really. I I I, I try to keep some. I, I I joke about not talking about my age, but clearly I'm I'm a middle aged white dude in this world. Uh, <laughs> but, Welcome to the club. <laughs> But uh, everything else is kind of out there, you know. And uh, and if you would, if it's not, someone can just Google your name. And go, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is all out there. Whether you Which talk one are about you? it, are you the scientist, the comedian, or the murderer? Which one are you? There's three. <laughs> are those the three, the three names. <laughs> it's all findable. Pick one. <laughs> well, the French guy with health insurance <laughs> in France. Which one are you? But uh, yes, my health insurance just went up forty percent. What, what's going on? What do you mean? My health premium oh, your premiums? just went up forty percent. Did I miss something? Probably. Wow. And I, I missed. Is it the, the beginning of the year? Is it the, well, the uh, enrollment the, period is over? But there was no letter saying your health insurance is going to go up forty <laughs> percent. I'd write a letter. No idea. <laughs> That's what I do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. They'll get back to you after Whatever. the shutdown. Whatever. Um, I'm, going, I'm going to Mexico. <laughs> You perform all over the place, though, so you probably do. do go to Mexico regularly. I just came back from Mexico, but yes, I was performing in Mazatlan. Uh, there's a resort down there uh, called Playa Mazatlan, and it's right creative. in the water. What's that? Hate <laughs> it? Clever. No, creative. Clever. Oh, creative. I thought you said hate it. <laughs> hate, hate it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's the second time I've been there. I actually performed with my wife, Bernadette Pauly, and... Uh, Basically, they name do your name again. The yes. communist. The communist. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, they usually we perform one or two shows depending on what time of oh. year and how many people are down there. And uh, they say come down for a week if you'd like, or as long as you'd like. And Where it's, is that? It's a, uh, it's just north of uh, Puerto Vallarta. Oh my. Oh. Uh, it's south of <laughs> Tijuana. It's kind 11? of in between. 
it's beautiful. It's an old like uh, colonial town, and it's right there on the ocean and breathtaking. Yeah. So is that a cruise there. stop or that's a separate? It's also a cruise stop. Okay. But this is a, a private. But that's not. But it's not a private. Resort. It's a public resort that we we've done a couple times now, and uh, it's separate from your cruising though that you also are on the, right. the I've performance actually, circuit. I've actually performed uh, on a cruise ship, and we actually stopped there prior to. <laughs> so you've done it all, really. I've done it all. <laughs> I've been there every way you could get there. That's it was so, so funny. funny. We, were, we were looking at uh, purchasing a condo there because it was super reasonable. <laughs> and uh, four years ago, I'm like, you know, we could just buy it and, you know. Figure it out. Go four years later, it's almost tripled in price. Oh, it's man. Like, really? <laughs> yeah. Real and and, and safe to say you didn't do it? And it's still reasonable. <laughs> no, no, it's still reasonable. But the fact that, oh, I could have got it for a third. I won't do it now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's stubborn. Yeah. Um, how do you deal, uh, not deal, how do you like the, the cruise ship um, circuit? We've got a, a number of guests lately who are doing it, and um, they all seem to really enjoy it for a variety of different reasons. Well, yeah. it's, it's so funny. It's it like used a to be a stigma, stigma. Uh, when yeah. I started out. It, they called you, you don't want to be a boat act. You yeah. want to be a boat <laughs> act. And uh, well, but they we always, talked to a couple of people who are very happy being well, boat they, acts the, from the, the financial. The pay, yeah, the pay is uh, more than your average comedy club. And let's face it, if you're if you're a draw, you can work wherever you want. If you put asses in seats, you're you going to command it. You can do whatever you want. But if you're not a draw, you know, then you got to take what I, I I take corporate gigs. I take comedy clubs. I take comedy clubs, uh, even some of the lower paying ones, just because. For my head, <laughs> you yeah. Know, for my sanity. Also, if a club treats me very well, I'll, I'll go back. If, yeah. You know, if the audiences are phenomenal, it's an addiction. But the cruise ships pay better, <clears throat> but you are kind of sequestered out there, and you do miss opportunities of other things because you're. Is it amazing. because you're sort of unavailable while you're? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, it's a fine balance. You can't In audition. Some years I take more than other years and then I have to look at my calendar and I try to book it out as far as I can and if I'm lucky I can book out a year and a half two years oh wow uh, holy crap uh, that's but great most comics don't have that they, they're they like where am I working next week mm -hmm. yeah and if you're relying on stand-up comedy income for your living good luck right <laughs> <laughs> and you have to you have to be able to ride that <clears throat> that wave and up in and out but what cruise line uh, I've been specifically fortunate with or a bunch Do any specific cruise lines I, I i'm a independent contractor i work for royal caribbean which owns uh celebrity cruise lines and then there's um princess and which is but you're available Carnival. for whatever yeah that's I've, what you're saying you private contract and then there's some of the high-end ones the regency and uh, uh the high-end ones do you notice a difference oh yeah the high-end ones treat you like a passenger, like a real... Like you're an act. Yeah. Yeah, they treat you like... You get the the sweet, you get the... Uh, you you eat these phenomenal meals. Well, I mean, the other it's cruise funny. lines do as well. They're, they're just definitely a couple of steps above. That makes perfect sense. It's funny. I didn't even mean that. I honestly meant um, the clientele, oh. the, the, the audiences. Can, is there a difference between the... The higher echelon ones and sure, say a carnival sure. booze cruise. The average uh, net worth on the higher ones is, I think they said, $25 million net worth. And most of them are retired. Mm -hmm. Most of them go on these world cruises. So they're older? They're, they're on three, six months, sometimes a year <clears throat> they're on these cruises. They go to oh, TV. Oh, wow. Jeez. And they just they pay their fifteen to $20,000 a week per person and double occupancy. So you have some people that will go solo mm -hmm. and they'll pay the twenty to $40,000 a mm -hmm. week. For six months, hefty. <laughs> Holy jeez! So, it's but they're life. they're catered to, and it's. But uh, it's nice. performing to the audiences, you know what I mean, material wise and just response wise, reaction wise. Uh, yes. Do you know that you do? You have to make adjustments. You yeah. do, I would yeah, imagine. Yeah, because you know a lot of the cruise lines are catering to families, so you're going to get that. You know, you'll you'll get teens to sixty. And then there's other cruise lines that are just going for the money, so you're going to get mm. a much older people in their late hundreds. You know. Do the 25 <laughs> million? Uh, um, do those have water slides and shit too, 
Or do, are they more on like, no. you know, we have Kino no and, and, Fine dining. And, uh, well, there's Kinos. They have these luxury excursions they go on. So. Oh. Okay, that makes more sense. People that make up beach lunches. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah. We watch that Discovery Channel thing on the biggest ocean liner ever made yeah. or whatever the fuck. And I mean, it's there's malls on this thing. It's yeah. massive, but it is made for children as much as adults. Yes, the, the ones that I like doing are the ones with the comedy clubs. And those will seat 150 to 200 people in a nice little cozy place that feels like a real comedy club and these ships That's are really so big cool. you don't feel any movement right yeah and you have a line of people out the door because there's 6,000 passengers to get and in they have to make reservations a couple hundred seat room maybe yeah so wow, cool. and, but you're doing 12 to 16 shows that was my next question yeah. so That's, you get a lot of turnover with the audience too then well you'll you'll get the repeaters because they love the show so much and we try to tell them they say you're going to see basically the same show for the first 12 shows and then at the end of the cruise we go into the theater and we do a different show for 1500 whoa seats. yeah jeez yeah that's those cool. are glorious it's that's like that's pretty cool that must be neat captive audience 1500 12 to 1500 people it's just a big room it's like being on america's got talent or something you know it's what i mean it's insane it's, it's like insane. a theater it is wow that's cool yeah the what is at it the sea. pasadena uh, civic center what performing arts whatever the big called. one the big one yeah, I, I actually did America's Got Talent at that theater, and it was, that was like heroin. Was like, I was totally joking. Did you really? I did, Good yeah. Good for you. Yeah, yeah, that was the, uh, that's the tape that I show. <laughs> <laughs> that was glorious. What I, season I was that? I went three rounds. I, it was, uh, or who, were, who were the judges, I should say? It was Simon's first season. And okay, so Howard's petri- gone. Howard was gone. Okay. I was petrified, because Simon's executive, he owns the show, so he's, British, uh, Britain's Got Talent, blah, blah, blah. He owns most of those shows, I he think. Owns, uh, he, he's going to be a billionaire within 20 minutes from now. He's crazy. But he's the mean judge, you know, and um, he was nice to me. Hey, really? <laughs> That's a yes, huge yes. bonus. Yes. That, you should, that should be your reel for everything because yes. people, everyone knows him for that. I, it's on my website, It's it, and he says... You're really, really funny. So wow. I left him when I got in the loop. And Heidi Klum, who's gorgeous, and she's like, I think you may be my favorite comedian. Whatever she, no, I, I did a British accent. <laughs> she's got a German accent. You know what I mean. <laughs> so Howie was very, very Howie was great, uh, especially off camera. He was very supportive cool. of me. Uh, He's a comic Mel B was my heart. tough one. Mel B was Re- my tough one. <laughs> but, uh, it's hard to crack the Mel B egg? Yeah. Did you get through? I, I didn't get X'd, man. I didn't oh. get the X, but uh, I I made it three rounds. And uh, again, I used, they wouldn't give me one of the, there was a better clip. They wouldn't give it to me, but I have 30 seconds of a really good clip. So that's the one I use. <laughs> I don't. Sh- I don't show the not making it clip. Oh yeah, because well, they, eventually they had. They had sure. I was with two other acts, and they go step forward. You know the light. <laughs> <laughs> what if you will be moving forward? <laughs> really, I didn't pick up on that. <laughs> How did it feel? Two of you will be going home. <laughs> I have. I have to ask because you could probably can see through it. How was it um, being part of that system when you can see through the system? Well, it's it's a producer show. It's a produced show. It's the they kind of know where they're going before they air it. Sure. But they they discuss it. Should we move Al on? Should we go with so and so? Should we go with that person? But it's more strategy, right? Yeah. This person was you know a hostage in hell for twelve hours. Let's go with that storyline. <laughs> I'll Did let they it go talk with that. about no, it no, in front of you? The tearjerkers. I know what you're saying. They get the audience well, on their side. Uh, yes, and and, and they go. They, they want. They want to hear the stories. They want to hear the. We lost our parents, or we we, we transgender. Yep. You know, there's <laughs> other stories. This was our last shot. Somehow Not you're giving it to us. So, and they they they'll do things like, oh my goodness, you're the funniest comedian I've ever seen in my life. Pause. I hated that last joke you did. <laughs> so when they edit, they can go either direction. Unbelievable. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, how do people oh. find you? How do people, uh, you know, social media and whatever you got going on? Um, uh, Aldusharm.com is my website. Uh, That's easy. Instagram, Stand Up Al is my social media thing. Stand Up Al. So you can get me at Stand Up Al on Instagram, uh, Twitter. Uh, I'm on Facebook. Uh, the Two Dicks are on Facebook and Instagram and yeah. Twitter. And it's a very, there, there's, <laughs> At two dicks, there's uh, two dicks. 
there's different variations of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you got to be careful where you go because you will, ah, you will yeah. see images. Say, don't start Googling. It's going to get crazy You'll see circus quick. acts. You'll see, but uh, <laughs> at Two Dicks 2 is the other one. And, but, but Two Dicks. And, of course, F is for Family on Netflix. Huge. Um, uh, we are waiting. You're, this is going up tonight, tonight correct? Yep. yep. We're waiting to hear the announcement for season four. That's incredible. Could be any, any time now. Well... It's not official. The whole so show I can't, is so awesome. It's looking that's good. Neat. It's, it's looking good. That's all I can say. That's a cool idea to think about for everyone involved. Mm. Three seasons are up now, though, on Netflix. Available you to be streamed today. Uh, there's six on the first season, so it's 26 episodes are available now. Oh wow, that's yeah. I didn't. I thought there was only like the. Few, I thought it was, they were all short seasons. They're 27 like the first to 30 one. minutes. So, no commercials. How do you guys fit in the longer seasons? I mean, the animation and everything takes so long, doesn't it? Animation is insane. I had no idea. I've done animation on a smaller scale uh, with uh, games, uh, computer games and such. But the animation, there's so much into it. There's, 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 it doesn't seem like there's enough there's turnaround like, there. There's like a thousand people involved to put it all <laughs> together. All. I mean, I don't, I don't know the exact number, but there's so many people involved. The writers, the, you know, the, the, uh, the animation itself and yeah. the... It goes on and on. Storylines, executives. There's many. It it takes almost a full year. Yeah, that's what I that's what I heard. That's what I'm thinking. So if they get picked up now, it's one of those you should just keep binging for a while yeah. because this new season won't be well, out for a bit. And plus, there's all these changes going on right now. So there was a delay with season three coming out. So it came out a few months later, and people were going bananas. And then everybody binges. Yeah, and then so they're out like, of. Where's it. the next one? We're like, we're working on yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> So Delay your gratification, doing. mister. <laughs> <laughs> Learn some self-discipline. Exactly. I didn't think that, I had no idea. I thought they were going to time release it, you know, like weekly. They just dump mm-hmm. them, right? They just dump them. Yeah. There's 10 episodes. There you go. So people were watching them in a <clears throat> night. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah, they're only half hour. Absolutely. Well, you get, and you, the, I, I've done this with shows too. You get enveloped by the storyline and the people involved and like they become your, what you're into that week. And it's yes. the neatest feeling. Momentary to, obsessions. Yeah. Mm. Big time. To get absorbed in that world for a minute. And you guys, that's a great world to get absorbed in. <laughs> yeah. That's so really. funny. I'm I'm so happy to be a part of it. And I, I thank Bill for bringing me in and, and Mike Price, our showrunner. He, he's very supportive. So That's awesome. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. yeah. Bill's a car guy too, right? Bill is a car guy. Yeah, big yes, time, yeah. Yes. I think so. Mm. I think he's a big time car guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think like he's a helicopter guy too. I, went, that's went, the other thing. He got his helicopter home. license, and he he just said, "I'm going to focus. I I always wanted to do this," and he did. He took the classes, and he goes, "I can't believe I made it," and now he's he's actually he flies solo. So he flies solo. with somebody, but he'll fly solo. I saw a thing where he took Joe Rogan on a you yeah. know, on a fly around, and it was like, there you go. You're doing it. You're doing it. That's yeah. it. Doesn't get any better than that, man. I, I mean, he hasn't invited me yet, but I'm a little like, can you get some more hours under your belt? <laughs> oh, I'd rather go, man. You'd be a le- legend. Died in a yeah. uh, helicopter oh, crash yeah. with Bill yeah, Burr. Oh, man. I want to get one more Done season. Deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he does too. Oh, you're awesome, man. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me on. You guys are Thank great. You so thanks much for being for here. Um, is there anything you have for us? No? All right, good. Phew, <laughs> that's pressure's <laughs> off. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, did we get it to everything, though? Pushing and pitching and everything out yeah, there? Yeah, you're going to put it under the description, you can, the website. Sure. And Ephesus for Family is the big one. They can always, they all lead somewhere to me eventually. Awesome. But uh, my YouTube Aldishan. page. It's got uh, Al Around the World, a travel show that I do. Um, and That's I've got, the one we didn't get I've got to talk some sketches about. on there, short films. You can get the two dicks there as well. Cool. Cool. So YouTube, and that's just your name as well, Al Ducharme. Al Ducharme. I know. I should have changed it. Why? Someone called, I, I, I've heard Al Dutchmeyer, Al <laughs> Dutchmark. Someone called me, introduced me as uh, Dutch Army. Like two different names, my first name being Dutch Army. Was and it I John always... Travolta by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> Adim Nazib or whatever. Oh, Adele okay. Adele Nazib. He's no. not good at introducing people. He gets the names wrong. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Oh, but, man. Uh, I thought that would be big. But Dutch <laughs> Army, I, I, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. It's all right, Mr. Army. No worries. <laughs> I always thought that I sh- maybe I should have changed it to that. <laughs> 
Well, you're awesome. Thank you for Thank being you guys here. For having me. Yeah. Um, I want to follow this what you're up to. This fact is unbelievable. That's why we pour it. <laughs> Mrs. Ryan, I love you. Uh, love we you love too. you for being here. Thanks so much, man. Uh, yeah. We love everybody at home. Thank you for watching and love everyone. Uh, let's see. Love one another is what I'm trying to say there. Mrs. Ryan, tomorrow <laughs> we have Stephanie Curtis from Brass Knuckles. I can't wait to talk to her. It'll be interesting. I don't know if she's coming here in the capacity to... I don't know if she's coming here as a representative of Brass Knuckles or not, but that is how I met her. Um, but it's going to be interesting to have some conversations about good vibes, probably about some medicinal marijuana and cannabis stuff, which is uh, the medication of choice for Mrs. Is Ryan that available in this state? Yes, it's legal. Really? Is that a joke? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's like three of them right by my house. Oh my God. Yeah, they're everywhere. That's the thing now. <laughs> they just popped over. up everywhere now that you just can. Uh, anyway, so that should be a good conversation. That'd be cool. It'd be nice to uh, get to know her too. So thanks so much. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Well, I won't be here. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs> So you guys are heavy on Instagram and you're doing YouTube as well? Yes, as of right now. We've sort of been growing it in a fishbowl almost because we're...